Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on AM 650. Welcome back to Boomer Life. I'm Simone Graywall. Today we're talking about addiction. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction or dependency issues, in studio with us we have people who can help. Jason Spees is the Executive Director and Interventionist at LDR Holistic Wellness Center. And John Patterson is the Human Relations Director. Now I want to talk a little bit about stages of dependency. Can you run those down for me? Yeah, essentially, uh, stages of dependency is, is I, I don't want to say it, it's classifying the individual, but it's a great template to start, um, you know, maybe putting uh, something to it in terms of this is maybe where I am. Um, and we basically have the five stages. So we have experimental, we have recreational, social, chronic, and habitual. And so w the reason why we wanted to talk a little bit about this here today is that um, many people overlook even stage one which is experimental and stage one is really where the foundation is is laid uh, for addiction and the transition through the other stages um, <clears throat> in the experimental stage it's really important to take a look at a number of different factors in terms of how addiction starts uh, to become uh, part of someone's life and the evolution of that and essentially um, one of the things that I really wanted to focus on here um, is is that in the experimental stage when we're first introducing a drink or a drug into our bodies uh, we're starting to have this chemical reaction mm -hmm. and so um, many people talk about you know that euphoric feeling the sense of ease the um, you know I, I, I'm out of my skin now I'm able to be who I am a social lubricant and so that matched with a society that really heavily inundates people with um, education actually around addiction and you know Budweiser commercials and you know camp I mean it's it's woven into so many different um, fabrics um, within our culture and our society we work hard all week it's Friday you know you, you make plans with your friends you want to have a couple glasses of wine it's just how people Absolutely. feel they sometimes need to just release that that energy it's a privilege mm -hmm. it's it's a rite of passage it's it's a it's a celeb you know, celebration of accomplishment in a lot of ways it's a stress reducer so we have a lot of um, factors that can really play into even the progression through addiction the other thing is is that when you have somebody that um, essentially introduces to their body for the first time you have a really amazing uh, or sometimes appears to be an amazing reaction and that is is that I haven't been really feeling okay with myself or I haven't had the you know the ability to do this in a social setting and it's a thousand deep I'm not going to go through them all but you know this is where somebody goes wow you know for ten bucks or fifty bucks or for hundred dollars I get to feel different and I don't only just to get to feel different I get to feel great you know in a lot of ways that's that's very seductive it's very powerful and you know it's really when we look at it that way we stop taking away the shame and the guilt from addiction um, you know many people fall into addiction in a very innocent way uh, you know wouldn't you say John well Absolutely. And, and, and in fact, if we realize that to an extent, each one of us is not only introduced from the time we're small, that this is an absolutely socially and culturally appropriate thing to do, but in fact, through all of the information that we get from the media, that that it will deliver the promise of the great life, mm -hmm. the great love, the great adventure. You mentioned the, the Budweiser commercials, <laughs> you know, you've got the, the pretty girls and, you know, the nice scenery and things like that. So yeah, there's that promise of, I can be another person. I can be a part of this. Yeah. And it's a small buy-in. And, you know, it, it's, it's very delusional in a lot of ways because um, we were talking about this earlier that, you know, in those commercials, they only play the first five seconds of that scenario over and over again, glamorizing it. They don't show the end of the movie where, you know, and I'm not going to get into that right now because we're going to move through this. But, you know, so the experimental stage is, is a really fundamental part of, of this template because many people... Um, 
you know start to take a look at treatment in the later stages of this of this uh, model uh, but they don't really see that all of the things that have fallen behind it that have really built um, what we want to call an addiction, right? So mm -hmm. an addiction isn't a person weak of willpower. An addiction is generally an investment over a period of time, whether it's short or long, um, and it's psychological, it's physical, it's social, it's, it's you know, there's there's a many different factors that play a part of it. Okay. The other piece that, that came up for me when you were talking about that, Jason, is, <clears throat> you know, it, when we're experimenting with drugs and alcohol, we're also experimenting with our identities. I mean, for a lot of us, this cycle begins at that stage of maximum personal vulnerability. I'm 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm just, everything's changing. I'm, I'm having difficulties coping with the changes in my body, with the expectations of the people around me. I'm starting to feel some pressure to grow up, but I'm, I still don't even understand what the nature of that is mm -hmm. or the implications of it. I'm trying on different identities. I'm, I'm reading the books to, to identify with the fictional character or the TV or the pop star or the whomever. And so is it in any way unlikely that at that same time where I'm trying on these different identity hats, I happen to come across something that, to Jason's point, for 10 or 15 or 50 or 100 bucks, I can be the hero. I can be the rock star. I can be the glamour queen. It's a shortcut to... To the, to the dream. To the dream. So that's stage one, experimental. So what about stage two, recreational dependency? Yeah, and recreational, um, you know, throughout these different uh, models, or sorry, stages within the model, um, there's, uh, again, today I don't know if we have all the time, but um, definitely would be willing to facilitate this in greater depth at our facility. But, you know, the recreational model is more about frequency. Um, one of the things I really wanted to underline here is that um, now that we've had the experiment, uh, we've almost had a sigh of relief. Whew, I got through that. I'm safe. Uh, yeah, I managed to puke on the rug, but I was able to clean it up before mom or dad got home. And again, experimental can go through so many different stages of life. This isn't just the kid. This is the, you know, this can be at different stages of life with different dependencies as well, or drugs or alcohol. I might try experimenting with pot. 10 years I might try experimenting with something else. So I, I just want to classify that because many people have this this picture of an addict or an alcoholic built in their mind. So I want to be careful of that. So recreational is usually a little bit more about, uh, obviously there's a, a different frequency here. Um, I have already discovered that this isn't going to kill me. And so I'm feeling a level of safety with it. Um, and I'm, I'm motivated by really the benefits because in the experimental stage, there's more benefits than there is consequences generally. Okay. Um, so the recreational is now, this is, we're moving into it with a little bit more of a safer feeling. Okay. And moving into, we talked a little bit about the social, the social side of it, you know, being around it. Um, on the weekends, that kind of thing. Yeah, social is, and in, in this model um, specifically, is probably one of the wider s spectrums um, in, in all of this because in the beginning of the social um, phase, you can have what would appear to be very, very functional drinking, mm -hmm. um, and, and even in some cases, um, drug addiction, um, because there really is a lot more benefits than there is consequences. And then at the end of the other side of social, you can have somebody who has got the beer league, they've got, you know, their watering hole, they've got a couple of different, you know, they've got their camping buddies. So they've got quite a wide social circle or different social circles that cater to different types of persons personalities. So um, again, you know, I don't want to really classify this, but this is just kind of some generalities around each one of these stages. Again, though, um, from experimental, recreational, now into social, there is this thought process that drinking and drugging is okay. Um, uh, even though there might be some shame around it, um, that I'm able to control it is probably a better way of saying it. So I'm in control. It's not in control. 
If you're just joining us right now on AM650 and Boomer Life, we're talking about addiction. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction or dependency issues, we've got the experts in studio. Jason Spees is the executive director and interventionist at LDR Holistic Wellness Center, and John Patterson is the human relations director. We're talking a little bit about the stages of dependency, and um, John, you wanted to... We're going to jump in there. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, Jason. I was just, I was just wondering, like, at, at this social stage, is this also the stage where I believe that I can't maintain my credibility with my social group if I'm not, if I'm not doing what my social group is doing? So, you know, 20 years ago, that was, you know, all the sales guys go out and they, they, they have the, the martini lunches, and you know, there was a whole social acceptability around certain kinds of drinking behaviors now I recognize they're sh they're shifting but is is this that stage where I think well I can't not have the drink I can't not toast the bride because what kind of a what would I be saying to people and is is this that stage of fear of social rejection if I don't you know they're maintain they're, it, Without being too um, specific, yes, that might be absolutely one of the, um, you know, the situations that are going on. However, this also is probably somebody engineering, actually even engineering social systems where they can really justify a lot of the behaviors. So, right. you know, they started off at the, um, you know, smaller divisions of hockey, for example, and now it's more of a, the guys go out after hockey and it's really become a, uh, it's it's the fabric of their relationship now. It's I can't wait to go out for a couple of drinks afterwards. And so if you're not going, you're not again being a part of the social aspect. You miss out on some conversations. The next day, your friends are talking uh, about it, and you said, "Hey, I, I wasn't there." Well, let's put one mm. thing out there: university. It's almost a rite of passage. I mean, you know, if you're living on campus or whatever, that you know, you're, the keggers. The ke and, yeah, yeah, you're having these parties where you know everybody's having just a blast, and you know, to to be at your dorm studying full time and not being a part of it you know what would we say to that person right so, so again stages of dependency we talked about experimental recreational social and then we get into chronic and habitual yeah you know the chronic and habitual um, you know evolution from social to chronic is a really interesting um, because this is the stage where uh, I'm going to call it the alcoholic or the addict doesn't want to go um, many times also in the social the addict and the alcoholic wants to preserve that relationship because it's normalized it's 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 still looked upon as probably fairly healthy so to go into the chronic means that oh my goodness I got a problem now the interesting thing, though, is that when I've worked with um, addiction, as I have for so many years, even at the chronic stage, most alcoholics and addicts think that they still have normalized drinking with um, small bouts of chronic uh, uh, severities in terms of consequences. And so it's really interesting to see that they're, now they're really trying to juggle this um, lifestyle um, where they're going in and out of chronic and social, um, especially f it can be for small periods of time or long periods of time. So chronic, I would say, uh, to, to really encapsulate what that, that means is that, you know, we're starting to see a number of, of consequences, whether it's physical, psychological. It could even be that I don't want to be around my family anymore because they're going to see my behaviors. Okay. You're listening to Boomer Life on AM650 with Simone Graywell. Today we are talking about addiction. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction or dependency issues, uh, we can help. We have Jason Spees in studio with us along with John Patterson. The website is holisticdrugrehab.org. And we were going to touch on this now, but we'll do it right after this break. We'll talk a little bit about some of the myths about addiction and some of the stigmas uh, related to it. So we'll be right back. It's all about the baby boomer lifestyle. Boomer Life on AM650.